have a special guest today. Jennifer Drago is going to be talking to us about aligning mission, vision, operations, and strategic planning. So this is some juicy stuff that is really relevant to most nonprofits, to certainly the industry and the nonprofit sector. Um, Jennifer joins us as a uh, strategy and governance consultant. So she has a ton of experience having worked with a number of organizations, um, probably on a national level. So I always love to talk to our consultants because they have the unique ability to work with more than one organization and kind of get those unique perspectives across the board. Um, my name is Meredith Tarian. I am one of your co-hosts today and I am joined here by my lovely co-host, Wendy Adams. Some of you may have seen us last week when we were in sunny San Diego for the Cultivate Conference. Uh, Wendy, what did you think about that? Fantastic. It's a must. Everyone should have it on their calendar. Yeah, it was great. We had a great time, like high energy. So if you missed the broadcast last week, see if you can catch it still on the website. Um, but let's go ahead and kind of get started here. Um, we will first want to thank our sponsors. Wendy, you want to kick us off? Absolutely. Nothing is possible without them. So Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Fundraising Academy at National University, 180 Management Group, your part-time controller, Staffing Boutique, JMT Consulting, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. We, we wouldn't be here if we weren't without our sponsors. Uh, we were talking last week about how when this whole thing started, the nonprofit show, it was intended to be a couple of episodes during COVID. And look where we are today. It was just a few weeks ago, we celebrated the 1000th episode which is incredible. So um, so anyways, big, big thanks to our sponsors. We wouldn't be here without you. Absolutely. So Jennifer, tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us about your, your organization, your company. What is it that you do? Well, thank you for, um, first of all, having me on the show and for asking me to introduce the work that I do. Um, I actually spent over 30 years in corporate uh, nonprofit work in the healthcare and senior living space in the Phoenix area. And um, in those roles, I did a lot of strategic planning. I did a lot of planning for new programs and services. I um, also was an operations executive for home and community-based services. So um, about three years ago, I decided to branch out and try to have more of an impact with more nonprofits. And that's when my company, Peak to Profit, was born. I do a lot of um, strategy work, which has also led into governance work. So I work a lot with boards of directors because whenever we're talking about strategic planning, and we're going to talk about that a lot today, um, that is the purview of the board. That is one of the board's key responsibilities is providing that strategic direction to the organization. So it's actually led me into a lot of board education, board development work, um, and usually nonprofits can improve a lot on the governance um, side of things. So I'm so pleased to be here today and share the, share my um, topics with you. Well, that is incredible. This is like music to my ears, right? What oh, I yes. hear you saying here about like this is a this is a board function, right? This is one of the responsibilities of a of a really good, effective board. So with that, let's go ahead and kind of get into the meat and potatoes here, right? So tell us, Jennifer, when we talk about strategic planning, like what does what does that really mean? When we're talking about, you know, when we say that an organization needs to embark on a strategic plan, and again, mm -hmm. that's a board function, like define that for us. What does that mean? Sure. Well, it's really the um, direction that the board and the C the board is going to um, hold the CEO to in, in, in order to move the organization forward, right? So when we think of a strategic plan at its core, people think about goals, but it's so much more than that. And um, that's why I would love to tell you about a process that I've been using for years and now I facilitate and teach on. And it's starting first with a vision of where the organization is headed. Um, so back when I started strategic planning some 30 some years ago, 35 years ago, we used to create these great, glorious 10 year strategic plans. Mm. And I think the world moved slower at that point because we could kind of <laughs> create a plan and work on it for 10 years. Then it got it went down to five years, then about two, three years is kind of the, the cadence now um, that an organization that's really moving and growing needs to um, use as their focus for a strategic plan. 
So what I like to do with a board is first work on what their vision is. And when I talk about vision real quick, I just want to say it's not your vision statement. We can come back and talk about a vision statement, which is generally one aspirational sentence that sits on your website, um, which is great. I'm talking about creating an actual document that describes in very um, descriptive um, terms where your organization is headed. And so, and, and when I create that with my clients, I use a 10 year horizon. So I'm back to that 10 year horizon, but mm. then what we're going to do is with that horizon, that becomes our destination of our GPS, right? So we're going to go on a road trip. Here's where we're headed. This is what we want our organization to look like 10 years from now. And then that roadmap becomes so much clearer because, you know, if I need to get there in 10 years, here's what I need to work on first and in the next two to three year period, uh, you get your strategic pillars, your strategic priorities, and then you can develop goals under those um, pillars. Wow. I, you know, Jennifer. One thing you, go ahead, Wendy. Well, I just, you know, I'm hearing this. I feel like I'm sitting in a classroom, Professor Jennifer. Like <laughs> and everything you're saying, I'm hearing roadmap, the direction, you know, it's beyond the statement on the website, which is important, but how are we going to get there? Thank you so much for just bringing clarity to what I think some just don't jump into because they're afraid of it. Mm hmm yeah. And without that vision of where you're headed, that destination, I mean, think about it. You wouldn't go on a road trip. You wouldn't um, you wouldn't go on any trip if you didn't know where you were headed. You wouldn't know what to pack. Um, you know, do I need food? Am I staying overnight? Do I have enough gas? Um, you know, am I flying or am I driving? You know, so so having that vision of where you're taking that organization. And again, this is the purview of the board. And so the board together, usually we do this in a board retreat setting. And uh, we ask a series of questions, which I can go through some of the questions to so get an idea of what we're trying to do. And really, once you create that vision, um, the strategic priorities become so clear. And then, uh, and then you can set the goals and, and cascade those through the organization, which we'll talk about soon. I, I just love this analogy of like the roadmap, right? Mm -hmm. Like how, how are you supposed to know where you're going if you don't know where you're starting? So, I mean, I love this idea of, you know, you, this analogy of, you know, we, we need a roadmap on how to get there. It's like kind of the compass for where, mm -hmm. where, how to, how to get to where we're trying to go as an organization. So, which kind of, kind of leads me to like my next question. So, you know, you talked about a vision, right? We, you said this is different than a vision statement. This is like a real concrete vision for where you see your organization in the next five or 10 years. So, you know, talk to us about that. What, what does that really mean, this, this vision? Um, how do you create one? Yeah, oh, well, so you ask your, your group, and again, I hope it's working with the board and um, maybe one or two or the senior leadership team, however your organization is, is organized. But you um, sit down and you think through a series of questions, and then what comes out of that, and I'll go through the questions in just a second, is a series of bullets, which become small paragraphs, which when you read that together, um, it paints a clear mental portrait of what this organization is going to look like in the future. And what's so beautiful about that is you share that with your donors and of course your board members and your leadership team and your entire staff and everybody can see this and it becomes kind of a rallying cry. And you don't just put it on a wall or talk about it once, you talk about it every time you come together. So it's, you know, telling a story, it's painting this picture um, so that everybody um, knows where you're headed. And here's what's really cool about this is even your frontline staff can mm -hmm. see how they be, how they're a part of that journey. Um, and so that's the beauty of this. So some of the questions that we talk about when we're building our vision narrative is, our customers. So who are we serving today? How will that be different in the future? Will we be growing our customer base? Do we have one market segment, but we want to add another? Um, from a geographical standpoint, if we're a brick and mortar business, uh, do we want to grow in geography? Um, what does our team need to look like? So as we're growing our customer base, um, and we might be growing our services. So we also want to ask what services are we going to be providing and would they be different tomorrow than they are today? Uh, what would our team look like? What company culture do we want to have? How do we want to, where do we want to be in the range of pay scales? Do we want to lead mm -hmm. the market uh, from a compensation standpoint? 
Uh, what do we want to be known for as a company? What reputation do we want to have? Are there national awards that we'd like to be recognized for? Uh, so you can see that as we're asking these questions and painting this real aspirational portrait, um, that how powerful that um, descriptive language can be as you're not just working on your strategic plan, but as you're moving daily toward that strategic plan. Jennifer, yeah, you've taken something that is so, um, like I said, our people are afraid of. I can't step into that. And so <laughs> we're just, we're kind of just rolling along and you just made it so simple the way you spoke that out. And what I loved most was you connected the board to frontline staff. It's for everyone mm -hmm. to be able to grasp, to hold on to, and to feel like they have ownership around. Beautiful. Yeah, and, I, and this goes for this type of process can work in the smallest of nonprofits mm -hmm. to the largest of corporations. And that's what I love about it. And to your point, Wendy, it's fun. This is yeah. really fun stuff. Like yeah. when you can like think outside the box, where am I headed? Where am I taking this organization? What's it going to look like? It's that makes it fun. And you're right. This is um, strategic planning is has this mystery and this scariness yes. to it. And it shouldn't. It should be it should be fun. You know, one of the things, Jennifer, that you said that I really keyed in on, and I love this, is you, you know, when you were going through some of the questions that you want to, you know, ask mm -hmm. yourself as you're going through this exercise, you referred to folks as your customers. And I absolutely love that. I mean, Wendy and I were talking last week yeah. on the broadcast when we were live at the Cultivate Conference about, you know, um, this idea of selling, right? Like we mm -hmm. are fundraisers in this profession. We are, we are selling our ideas our opinions, our services, our programs, we're selling things every day. And I love it that you said, you know, who are your customers? When we look at our folks and, uh, you know, our counterparts in the for-profit world, you know, they have a clear understanding of like who their product, what their products are, who their customers are. And I love it. I just love it that you use that word. Yeah, thank you. And it depends, right? So every nonprofit, they might have clients. I've worked in healthcare. So we had patients in senior living. It was residents. You know, we talk about our team members as team members or associates. So whatever language is appropriate gets worked into that vision narrative, of course. Well, that's a great kind of segue. So as we're talking about, you know, executing a strategic plan, you know, you said early on, Jennifer, in the broadcast, you, you were telling us that, you know, it's, it's one thing to... Um, to come up with a strategic plan, but it's another to, to really carry it out, right? Mm -hmm. So talk to us about that. I mean, one of the things that I tend to see, having worked as a consultant and working with a, with a number of organizations in strategic planning is that, you know, they sometimes feel like the process is over when they get the strategic oh. plan, right? So tell us what, you know, what is, what do we do with it once we have this big, beautiful document? Yeah, well, um, it's funny that you say that because my early days in strategic planning, so I came in and I was, um, you know, under a VP of strategic planning who created a binder this thick of, you know, the strategic plan and all the supporting um, plans and documents and goals that went with it. And guess where that binder sat on that shelf back there? No on one ever shelf. opened it. No one ever looked at it. Right. So I'm all about um, having simple documents, one pagers, if you can, perhaps your vision narrative is on one side and your um, strategic plan with your annual goals is on the other. Um, simple things, but here's the most important thing in that um, story that I just told is visibility. So mm. if you want your strategic plan to actually be executed upon, it needs to live in the organization. It needs to be talked about, not just once a year, not just quarterly, at least monthly, my preference is weekly that we're talking about that, right? So every single time the board gets together, hopefully that's monthly or bi-monthly, um, they're reviewing the strategic plan and the and the goals and the progress on the goals. And that should, by the way, be first on the agenda. Um, so generally <laughs> we bury that stuff toward the bottom of the agenda after the minutes and the financials. No, that's strategic work, that's important. That's right. It goes on the top of yeah. your agenda. Um, every single time you're meeting with your staff, you should be reviewing that vision narrative and talking through where are we on these goals. And one of the things that I like to use, so visibility is number one. The second thing that I like to use is a very clear dashboard. So um, our scorecard, and it lists all your goals. And, and um, in simple terms, just with a stoplight diagram, red, green, or yellow. 
-hmm. How are we doing on this goal, right? And when you're bringing this to a board or to a, a leadership meeting, you really only need to focus on the yellows and the reds. And sometimes things get stopped in their tracks. And so if it's a red that's not going to progress, you don't need to talk about it. But if it's a red because we've hit some barriers and we need to to remove those barriers, you need to talk about it, right? So so that clear stoplight diagram helps everyone see at a glance, how are we doing and are we meeting these goals? And so those two things alone, I think uh, if we worked on visibility and having um, you know, clear scorecards, metrics, whatever you wanna call it, um, that we're reviewing, um, that will help with the execution 100%. I love that because, you know, you, you said it best, the, the, you know, most expensive strategic plan you can make is the one that just sits on a shelf and, and doesn't, it doesn't get used. Right. And so, and I think that we see that a lot is organizations, they, they tend to think that they're done with the process, right? It's over when they have the glossy, you know, brochure document. The other thing that I love that you said here is, you know, listen, we don't need a binder that's full of like appendices and, and you know, uh, documents, right? Like mm -hmm. a, a simple one pager or maybe a, a two pager is sufficient as long as it identifies, you know, your strategic goals or your strategic pillars. And kind of like we said earlier, the direction of where you're headed or where you're going. Yeah, Absol and, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I, this kind of goes without saying, but I'll say it anyway, because it's uh, you, you can write goals all day long, but they need to be specific, measurable, time bound, action or, you know, the smart goals. Right. I don't it's kind of a trite or overused um, term or philosophy, but it's so important. I can't tell you again because I work with so many boards, how many um, goals I see written that are just in mushy terms. You know, we're going to create this program. OK by when, who's doing it, you know, <laughs> um, what's it going to look like? How, how are we measuring it? Um, you know, are there any metrics we can attach to it? So um, really specific goals also, of course, lead to uh, great execution. And Jennifer, I think you, you said that so well, it, to make them really smart is that visual, right? Me keeping them in front of, that's what takes it from smart to really smart is that people are going to end the antidote to what mission drift, Right. Mm -hmm. We start going here. We start going there. If this is coming out in each and every meeting and it's just becoming a natural part of our conversation, we're addressing that issue and we're, we're taking those smart goals and making them really smart. Great. Love it. Well, you, you ladies are both like two steps ahead of me here because the next thing that, you know, we kind of wanted to know, Jennifer, this is this is kind of the next step here is, you know, talk to us about this. So you said you already acknowledged it's important for you know your board and your staff to be reviewing these um, these goals, the strategic plan. You said on a, you know, on a monthly, at least preferably even a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. So, you know, talk to us about about aligning those objectives, right? Aligning the, the team with the goals that have been created and, and kind of getting everybody in alignment and sort of in lockstep on uh, on meeting the goals that have been set forth in this strategic plan. Yeah. So the first thing that uh, and we just mentioned it is accountability around mm -hmm. who's doing who's supposed to be doing what. Right. And then once we have that clearly laid out in the goal structure. So in the dashboard that I use, it lists the goal and then who's responsible and then the timeline. Right. And then any metrics, of course, that are going to be um, done with that. So so we know when we finish our strategic plan, who's responsible for each step in the process. So that's kind of number one. But then I also like to see organizations build those goals into the person's performance assessment, right? So um, mm -hmm. it's one thing to be um, assessing somebody on their the functions and roles and responsibilities in their job description, but they also should have a part of that performance assessment be linked to the accountability for toward those strategic goals. So it's not just, especially when we're talking about operating a nonprofit, right? We have to fight those fires every day and serve our customers every day. But if we're trying to grow programs and do things that are strategic, that requires dedicated time, dedicated brain power, right? And so, especially when you're talking about leaders and middle managers, we need to hold them accountable to both of those functions. And so it needs to be built into the performance assessment, in my opinion. In fact, in an ideal world, what I would love to see is that everybody's performance evaluation right down to the front line somehow connects back to the goals of the organization. 
Um, and, and so, you know, in frontline, it might look a little bit different um, in, in its, our senior living organization, for example, um, everybody had uh, a shared goal around occupancy and which was, you know, are we selling our product and keeping our residents happy so they want to stay and mm -hmm. around um, meeting their budget, right? Because everybody contributes to that in some way. Um, but at the leadership level, of course, their goals look different. So that cascading of um, accountability. And, and one thing that we don't do well, many nonprofits don't do well, is if somebody isn't meeting their mm. responsibility is, um, you know, coaching them to try to meet that accountability, that responsibility. But then if that doesn't work, moving them um, on down the road and finding someone else who can do the job better. I feel like it, um, the nonprofits that I work for are much slower to take mm -hmm. that action than for profits. And we we just, I mean, especially with the margins that we have, which hopefully we have a margin, <laughs> are so slim, we don't have time to waste. Um, so we need to maybe hire methodically and slowly and fire more quickly when, when that's necessary. What I hear you describing, Jennifer, is what I like to call the secret sauce of compassionate accountability. I hear you. Mm -hmm. And and there is accountability that's there, you know, because this is true alignment, alignment in its fullest sense. And when we're not there, you know, we're not going to attain that big, hairy, audacious goal that we have. So, yeah. you know, and and if we think about it, um, and I used to use this term a lot, working in nonprofits. Now, sometimes our salaries aren't the highest in the world. Mm -hmm. I'll give you that. But the work that we do, generally people gravitate toward nonprofits because they enjoy having an impact uh, and participating in the impact of that nonprofit. That's a privilege, you know? Yes. So, so we really need to look for the very best people to um, enjoy that privilege. That is just incredible. I, I mean, Jennifer, I, one of the things I heard you say here that was so um, powerful, I think impactful for me, and I, I don't know that I've ever thought about it this way before. You know, you, you acknowledged and said, you know, we absolutely, we want to be evaluating folks um, as, you know, in a performance review, mm -hmm. but tying that strategic plan to their performance review and having them evaluated on, you know, how they are aligning their objectives and their, their motivations to that, to, you know, that strategic plan, that's a powerful piece that I think will keep everybody really focused on it, right? And um, the other thing is, you know, sometimes, they, you know, in the nonprofit industry, we want to keep folks, right? We oftentimes see higher turnover rates in the nonprofit industry, and we want to keep folks on our staff. So, you know, I, I've been in organizations before where I've been on staff for a few years before a strategic plan is even created. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when I was hired, my job uh, description didn't necessarily align with the goals in that strategic plan, but now I'm still on staff. So I love, love the idea of tying it to a performance review so that, you know, folks are focused on it and recognize and realize that, you know, this is a team effort. We all have to be working towards the same goal. Yeah. And actually you mentioned, um, you mentioned something that made me think if we have a strategic plan in place, that can be part of the hiring process too, right? Yes. So we can be sharing that during the hiring process and really evaluating the fit of that person with this um, strategic plan and allowing them to do the same. So it is really so important that we have those. Uh, Jennifer, plans. that's exactly what I was, I, you <laughs> took the words out of my mouth. I'm thinking we're addressing a whole nother issue that we all are struggling with in this space but if we can create this ownership, because that's what that's going to do, right? Now, now we're addressing, now our HR director is happy, right? We're not yeah. just continuing to do the churn. So, so yeah. great. Um, I know we're getting close. I just had a question. In mm -hmm. this process, as you're working, where do you, in, along this the, the line of the steps, do you see your biggest wins happen, those aha moments, and, the, and then the challenge space? Great question. Um, so. <laughs> the biggest, um, so I think the biggest aha is kind of what we've just experienced today, right? When you lay the process, when I'm working with a board and I lay this process out from the very beginning, they, they go, oh, this does all fit together. So all these things that we're struggling with, hiring, retention, um, accountability, all these things come together in this mm. process when we do it. And it's, and it's not 
difficult work, right? It's just mm -hmm. intentional work. Um, so that's probably the biggest aha. The biggest challenge that I see is that we, um, and we, I think we talked about this a little bit before, is just um, governance in general, the board process and structure, and um, sometimes in a nonprofit, um, I feel like it's a checkbox, right? Yes, we have a board. Um, you know, care and feeding of the board, oh, that's kind of optional. <laughs> Our bylaws, oh, we haven't looked at those in 20 years. Mm -hmm. And um, so almost 100% of the time when I'm working with a board, one of the strategic pillars um, in order to grow the organization or mature the organization always tends to be around governance and how do we strengthen that structure? And it can be everything from, uh, we don't have term limits, but we really probably need to consider term limits. We need to get some new blood on the board. So we need to have an intentional recruitment process with a governance committee that actually manages that process. Um, we don't do, we don't have a CEO succession plan. I mean, there's so many important things um, that fall under, again, that purview of the board of directors that I feel like um, as nonprofits, sometimes we miss that. And um, so that becomes a point of education and additional work to be done mm -hmm. for the organization generally. Thanks. I appreciate that. I have, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I mean, the board is so important to a nonprofit organization. I mean, I, I tell my clients all the time, a board can make or break your organization. So That's it. You know, investing in, in like good folks, solid folks who really are um, understand your mission, understand their role and their um, their contribution as a board member is so critical. Mm -hmm. So it's the um, key to, I, I always say it's the key to com competitive advantage. And yeah, I don't think it. we think about that. We think about so many other things contributing to competitive advantage, but your board, because they're leading this strategic direction, because they're providing the oversight and they're helping to course correct, they are the key to your competitive advantage. Yeah, they really are. I am pumped. I am pumped today. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is uh, Jennifer Drago, everybody. Peaktoprofit.com. Check her out. She is a strategy and governance consultant. And as you heard today, I mean, she has... A, just a wealth of experience in this area and just the importance of strategic planning. I, I am shocked at how many organizations do not currently have an active strategic plan. So for those of you joining us, if, if, if you fit into that bucket, you know, this is something you definitely want to get after. We, we just so enjoyed having you with us today, Jennifer. Thank you for your words of wisdom. Yeah. Um, we want to close out and again, just thank our sponsors again for, for your support and your loyalty over the past uh, several years here. Bloomerang, nonprofit, uh, American Nonprofit Academy, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Fundraising Academy at National University, 180 Management Group, your part-time controller, Staffing Boutique, JMT Consulting, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. So we are so appreciative of our sponsors. We really wouldn't be here without you. And uh, and Jennifer, we we so appreciate having you join us today. Wendy, yeah. enjoyed having you and, and your thoughts. I mean, Wendy shared with us the secret sauce uh, from her perspective. So we need to get that recipe. You're going to have to share that one with us. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Really appreciate it. Thank you. It was my pleasure. I really enjoyed our conversation. Well, thank you, ladies. We uh, we had another wonderful nonprofit show. Um, we enjoyed having you all with us and make sure you catch us tomorrow. That's right. And what do we always say? Be well so you can do well. Be well so you can do well. <laughs>